Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to explore the idea of how to test your main function. In the last two videos, we saw how you could test your C++ code using Google Test and Cache 2, but all these projects, let's look at the root cmakerlist.txt file that we had. In all these projects, our executable linked against the main cpp file and the main cpp file contained the main logic of our application if we go back to the last project we had in the last lecture so i think this is what we had no let's open 23 i think that's going to be what we had in the last lecture this is our main function so we have tested everything we had in the source folder we have tested the calculator library because it is tested in test calc here but the code in the main function is not tested and this is also something you should test because if somebody changes something that breaks things, you need to be notified by your testing framework. And that's what we want to do here. And we won't be doing anything fancy. All we want to do is to grab the code in the main function and wrap it in a function that we can test. And then in the main function, we will be just reusing that function that is testable. So the main function won't be doing anything else. It will be calling that function here. This is the model we had earlier. The calculator and main CPP file were wrapped in the rooster target. But now we are going to separate things up. We'll set up a calculator target that we can test separately. But we will also wrap the main logic of the application in this run app function that we can test. Rooster is going to link against run app. Run app is going to itself link against the calculator. And we will have the flexibility to test this block of code here in our application. Let's open the project that actually does that. It is going to be in project 24, I think. So we are going to open this up. Again, you can get the code from GitHub. It is nothing hidden, so it is open to the public. And what we have done here, notice that we have taken the code we had. We actually took the main function and renamed it to be run app. This is basically what we did. We also moved that in the source folder and put that in a run app.cpp file. That's what we did here. And this is the run app function that we can call. The other thing we did, we went in the cmake list.txt file we added a library named run app, which is going to contain the main logic of the application. This library is going to link against the calculator library because if you go in the source file, you see that we are using logic from the calculator library. That's why we need to link against it here. In the main function, okay, we won't be doing anything fancy. We will just be calling the run app function. Notice that we are passing zero as the number of parameters and uh, null pointer for this character pointer argument. This is really not going to matter. Once we call this function, we will return zero and our application is going to work like it did before. But now we have the ability to test this function here because it is not our main function. We want these things to be separate. How do we test this? Because all it's doing is really printing out output. Well, it turns out that we can redirect this output to a string stream, collect that output and compare that against what we expect this function here to print out. If you look at this, we expect this to print add 10 for and print the result here and print a new line character and keep doing that until we reach the end. That's something we can do in our test run up function here. So let's look at it. It is going to declare our run app function and specify that it is going to be coming from a separate translation unit. That's what this extern keyword means. We have our test block. Notice that we want to redirect output to a string stream. We will set up the string stream here. We will redirect output. This line here is redirecting output to the string stream. After we have redirected output, we can call the function and it is going to be writing whatever it prints out in this string stream here. This is something you need to understand. After we do our printing, we will restore std out to its previous buffer. And after that, we can test the content we have in the buffer against what we expect here. And that's what this require clause is doing. We want to see if what we have in the buffer 
is equal to expected output. And if they are not equal, there must be something wrong with our run up function and we will be able to test it like this. This is something I want you to take and reuse in your projects. Whenever you have a function printing out something that you want to test, this is how you do it. And this is really, really useful. Again, the main thing in this lecture is to remove the main logic of the application from the main function and put that into a function that we can easily test like we are doing in our test run app CPP file here. The rest is really integrating these things into our application. You notice that our unit test library is made up of test calc and test run CPP, which is what we have here. And we are going to link against run app. We won't be linking against calculator because run app is linking against calculator for us. So we don't need to redo that right here in the cmake list.txt file that is integrated into our test folder. The rest is really what we have done before. We will include C test and catch and uh, make these unit tests visible to the C test module that is built into CMake. Now that we have this, we can try to build this and see if it actually works like it did before. So what we can do, let's remove whatever we had in the build folder because we don't want that to mess up our project here. Let's configure, you know how to do that. C make S and B build. This is going to configure our project. It is going to download catch too because it is the dependency we are using here. So this is what is going to happen. We will download the code from the repository and build it and its targets are going to be made available to our project so that we can link to them like we are doing here. And this is really cool. Let's wait. While we are waiting for this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. That's going to help me out. If you have something to share in the comments, please do that. I really want to hear what you think about these videos. If I am doing good, please let me know. If there is something I should improve, let me know too. That's going to let the YouTube algorithm know that these videos are actually good because I am building them to be good. So let me know if you think they are good. Okay, we have a problem here. What happened? Okay, there must have been a problem with the internet. That's what I think. Let's try to configure again and see if this goes away. If the problem persists, we will try to find it. So now it must have been worked. Let's try to build CMake world world and wait for this to build building this is taking some time on my machine here i don't know why using the msvc compiler surprisingly this is going a bit faster with other compilers but this is not a problem if you need this you need to wait for it to finish so let's do our good waiting game here and by the way i want you to start integrating these ideas into your own c projects because now you are becoming a fairly competent CMake developer and you understand a lot about CMake. In the next few videos, I will talk about generating the documentation using tools like Doxygen. I will talk about package managers. So if you are watching this video, be sure to watch the others because they are going to really talk about important topics in C++ using CMake. We have a build our rooster target. So let's cd into build and do C test to see that we are testing. Notice that we are calculator test, okay? And we have test run up test. This is going to test our function and everything is going to fall in place. Let's go back in run up and try to mess something up. What can we do? So if we say, for example, S after the add function call, this is going to mess up what we expect and our tests are going to fail. Let's try to build again. So let's say cmake build build, but this is not the root directory. We need to change this to be in the current directory. And uh, if we do see test, we should see something failing. One test failed and what failed, test run up failed. And it is going to give you to look for the details in this log file here. If you go there, you will see what was actually printed out. I think we can do that. So let's go there because it is a good learning opportunity. We can view the build folder, reveal in explore. And where do we go? We go in build testing. Let's do that testing. 
temporary latest log. Let's do that. We open this up in our editor. And uh, if we go down, I think we will find something that failed. Uh, what failed? Okay, require buffer. This is what we have from the output. Okay, and this is what is expected. We have an S that we don't expect. This is how you can find out what is wrong. Once you know what is wrong, you can go back in your source code and fix it. We take out the S that we added here. We build again. See, so make build and build. Oh, it's the current directory again. So it's going to build C test and we will fix our program to have 100% here. This is what we are looking for. And this is really all I had to share in this video here, showing you how to separate the logic from the main function to make it easy to test. This is currently using catch2 as a testing framework, but you can easily change this to use Google test as we have seen earlier. Okay, this is all I had to share in this video. I hope you found it useful. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support me. That's going to make the YouTube algorithm know about these videos. I am going to stop here in this video. I will see you next time.